Continuing on with Sports Talk, joined this segment by senior sports writer at the Morning Call and co-host of the program, Keith Grohler. Keith, nice to have you with us. Always good to be with you. And joined via the Skype line, we have Jeff Kerr from CBS Sports, 247sports.com, NFL reporter. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, my pleasure, Chris. Thanks for having me. Good to catch up with you again. I know it was a busy uh, offseason after an exciting uh, season for the Philadelphia Eagles in particular. We'll be talking all about the NFL draft in just a moment, but I did want to get your thoughts on the Eagles offseason. They've made quite a number of moves this uh, offseason, uh, adding wide receiver Mike Wallace, uh, uh, Michael Bennett, Richard Rodgers, and others, and a couple familiar names are no longer with the Eagles. So what are your general thoughts on the Eagles offseason so far? Well, Chris, I really like the Michael Bennett move. I know the initial reaction, at least on the 24-7 sports page, was why do they need Michael Bennett? Well, why don't they need Michael Bennett? Uh, he would have been their best pass rusher last year, which is kind of incredible when you think about it, when you have Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox. Mm -hmm. But adding Michael Bennett, specifically as a third-down pass rusher, tremendously helps this defense. Now you're going to have a guy who's not going to play 978 snaps in 2018. That's going to get cut down to about 400, 500. So you're going to get a more productive Bennett on top of Brandon Graham, Chris Long, who was surprisingly really good last year, uh, Fletcher Cox, Derek Barnett coming into his own, Timmy Jernigan. I mean, this is a scary defensive line without Michael Bennett. Now you're adding him as a third down pass rusher. And all you gave up was Marcus Johnson, who is a nice young player, but he's not Michael Bennett. And a fifth-round pick, uh, I think I would take Michael Bennett for what they gave up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. On paper, the, the deal certainly looked like a steal for the Eagles. And then, of course, after that transition went down, a uh, short time after that, word came out that Michael Bennett could have some law issues. Eagles obviously are not saying a whole lot right now because uh, a lot will be determined in the courts over the next uh, weeks and months. But uh, do you think this could have a lingering effect? Michael Bennett, of course, has some baggage coming in. That clubhouse seemed so unified all last year. Do you think Bennett, uh, his off-the-field issues, could have a negative effect on the Eagles? I don't think so, Chris. Uh, you know, it's Michael Bennett is one of the more polarizing athletes in the NFL right now because he does so much good at, you know, the whole Black Santa thing, the whole charity, uh, what he gives back to the community. And it's so weird in Seattle. You either loved him or hated him. And I think it's going to be that way in Philadelphia. Everybody's going to look at the Vegas incident. Everybody's going to look at this recent incident. But you got to mix in the good with the bad here. And you know, the guy is an intelligent individual. There's no doubting that. And I don't know too much about what happened in Vegas that night. Um, same with this Houston incident. But it is kind of awkward that, you know, I mean, I don't want to get too opinionated here, but having a 66-year-old paraplegic, you know, going after him 14 months after the incident, it just seems a little bit... I think we need a little more on the situation than what's being presented right now. It just seemed like, you know, the Houston police chief is just going after Michael Bennett. And, you know, whether he's right or wrong, we don't know yet. But I just feel we need more information than what is being released. Um, you know, when you're hiring Rusty Harden to be your attorney, that says something. You know, Michael Bennett is trying to clear his name. But I, as far as it being a distraction to the Philadelphia Eagles, I don't think it's going to be like that. I just keep looking at the Nigel Bradham thing. I thought that was going to rear its ugly head as time went on, and it didn't. You know, I think you know you might just have like a settlement suit, and this whole thing might be dropped. Mm -hmm. On your site, you had a, a nice article about the Richard Rogers signing and kind of hinted that he's going to slide into the uh, spot previously occupied by Trey Burton. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on that? And it, it seems on the field again with all the issues, uh, all the transactions that the Eagles made, it seems like there's nothing but upgrades so far, and that's prior to the draft. Yeah, I really like the Richard Rogers signing a lot. I thought that was a move that he wasn't on my radar by any means as a tight end, the Eagles we're going to go after, but he is a pass catching specialist. Uh, there's no denying that. And what happened in Green Bay's offense was I think he lost a lot of playing time when Martellus Bennett uh, came into the fold and he never really got it back. And Bennett said on, uh, I mean, sorry, not Bennett. Um, Roger said on Friday that he didn't know why he was losing playing time. He, he said, you know, you would have to talk to Green Bay about that. He just continued to do the role he was meant to do, but the Eagles, 
wanted an athlete to replace Trey Burton. And Rodgers can provide that. He lined up in the backfield in Green Bay. Um, he was kind of an H-back, but more more so than not, he was a pass-catching specialist for them. Uh, people seem to forget Richard Rodgers was the guy who caught Aaron Rodgers' Hail Mary touchdown against Detroit on Thursday Night Football a couple years ago. You see the athletic ability there, and I think if he can get 300 to 500 snaps – and the Eagles offense compared to 160 he had in Green Bay last year, I think it's going to make a difference. Uh, more importantly, it's going to solidify the depth of that position. Uh, the Eagles just did not have anybody outside of Zach Ertz that were proven. Uh, you know, Billy Brown, good player, but he's never played an NFL down before in the regular mm -hmm. season. Josh Perkins has had minimal success, but he's mostly a practice squad player. So we really don't know – what the Eagles had there, and I think they are going to draft the tight end at 32. I think that's very possible. But Richard Rodgers now, I think it gives them a lot more flexibility than what they had last week at this time. Mm -hmm. Jeff, the only thing less valuable than my NCAA tournament bracket pool uh, before the first game is played is a mock draft, in my opinion. I mean, especially this year. Uh, I, I, I don't think we have any idea where this thing is going, but I will at the same time Get your take on where we're going with trades, quarterback movement. I mean, we, my goodness, there could be three quarterbacks taken uh, within maybe the first five or six picks in this draft. It's fascinating. It's fun to play around with it. It's fun to conjecture. But I don't think anybody really knows what's going to happen. What is your best guess on where we're going to go with trades in the first six, seven picks of that draft, especially when you realize that here – in the Lehigh Valley, we have a young man by the name of Saquon Barkley who a lot of people are interested in, and a lot of people are rooting for him to go to the Giants because they can get to see them play. Yeah, to me, it's funny as a Penn State grad, I, I, I mean, I'm a little biased here, but I think Saquon Barkley is far and away the best player in this draft, and I don't think you're going to get too many people that disagree with that. Uh, personally, I think he should be going number one to the Cleveland Browns. They have a Tyrod Taylor. They have an A.J. McCarron. And the Browns can still get that quarterback at four. I, I think they could actually get Barkley at four. It's it's incredible. Um, you know, I know uh, a couple Giants writers I talked to, they don't want anything to do with Saquon Barkley. They want to draft a quarterback. They're, they're all into the whole Josh Rosen thing, which I do believe you need a franchise quarterback. But – Honestly, I just don't see it in this draft. Josh Allen doesn't impress me. Uh, Josh Rosen, you know, he's he may be the best of the bunch. Uh, I mean, really, you could get the best quarterback. Lamar Jackson may be the best quarterback in this draft. We honestly don't know. Baker Mayfield, uh, there could be a guy in the later rounds. It's not like when the Eagles moved up to get Carson Wentz. They got their guy. I think Jared Goff was a good quarterback when he got drafted. Same with Wentz. It, I just don't see that this year. So if that's going to be the case, why don't you go after a Saquon Barkley or a Minka Fitzpatrick? Get a player who's going to make a difference for your football team and be better. You can always get that game manager quarterback in the later rounds. The Dallas Cowboys proved that. So, I mean, it's – are you going to win a Super Bowl if any of these guys? I don't know, but honestly – if you're going for the best player available, Saquon Barkley's it. Well, and I, I, I agree with everything you said. I mean, I, I watch a lot of Pac-12 uh, football. It's usually the, the, the games that are on are Pac-12 games when I get around to watching football on a Saturday. And I'm not impressed with Darnold, Rosen, or any of those guys. Maybe Allen's the, 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 the guy or May, Mayfield. Mayfield uh, looks like he's, his stock is rising. What are your, what are your thoughts on May, Mayfield maybe going uh, in the first round, maybe in the upper half of the first round? Yeah, I think Baker Mayfield's going to be a first-round pick, and I, I know a lot of my friends secretly know I'm not the biggest Baker Mayfield guy. I I don't even want to say he has baggage. I just don't think it's going to translate to the NFL. I think he played in an immensely spread offense with a very good offensive line and very good skill players around him and benefited off that. And, you know, Lincoln Riley is a very good college football coach. I thought he put Baker Mayfield in the best position to put up numbers and win, and Obviously, we can't deny the Rose Bowl performance, but you could say the same thing with Sam Darnold. It, any quarterback looks good when a defensive back is playing 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. So, I, I mean, what Baker Mayfield has done is impressive. I like this. I'm very intrigued to see where he goes and where he fits because if he can go into the right system, I think he could be a good NFL quarterback. But back later. I, I don't know. It's To me, I just keep looking at the intangibles and – you know, the whole chip on my shoulder thing, it could work, but Johnny Manziel had a chip on his shoulder too. It didn't seem to work yeah. out too well for him.
Uh, Jeff, uh, our special guest this segment uh, via the Skype is Jeff Kerr from CBS Sports and 247sports.com, uh, NFL writer. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on the draft overall for the NFC East teams. Uh, obviously, the Eagles not as much of a priority this year, picking at 32. Uh, I think the latest uh, mock draft on your website has the Eagles going with Tyrell Crosby, a tackle out of Oregon, who I know nothing about. Uh, but what are your thoughts on some of the teams in the NFC East and which of those teams, especially I would imagine the Giants with the number two pick and then the Redskins and the Cowboys with some disappointments last year. For those three teams, it's going to be a big draft. Which, which of those three teams must have a drop-dead solid uh, draft in order to improve? Um, personally, I think the Giants are first on that. Uh, you know, 3-13 and 13 last year, that's a problem for them. You know, I don't think Giants fans realize their team really wasn't any good last year. And they had <laughs> issues at the quarterback position with 37-year-old Eli Manning. They have issues at running back. They have a porous offensive line. Uh, their defense, they have reshuffled. Uh, I Honestly, I think they need to hit a home run on every pick in this draft, which may be why they should. They should take a chance at a quarterback at number two. And this is a deep running back class. I think you can get a running back in the later rounds. And they do have high picks. But I think the New York Giants need to have a good draft more than anybody. I think the Cowboys need depth. So it would help if they would draft, you know, more offensive linemen. Guys who can replace, you know, the whole, well, Dallas's defense isn't any good without Sean Lee. Well, get a guy to replace Sean Lee. Stop relying on Sean Lee. Stop relying on Demarcus Lawrence and your stars to be healthy for 16 games a year. That just doesn't work. So I don't think Dallas needs much. Washington, they're in such a state of flux. I really don't know what direction they're going in. I like some of the moves they're making this offseason, but they could be a team that could be interested in drafting the quarterback. Alex Smith is no spring chicken here. So they're an intriguing team as well. And as for the Eagles, well, they don't need much. Um, I just think it's more of restocking a roster. Do they have needs? Uh, not not pressing needs. I mean, when your most pressing needs is probably slot cornerback and you already have a guy to replace him, uh, Patrick Robinson, in the Jalen Mills, that's saying something about your football team. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as the Giants, do you think there, there's rumors, again, your website has Bradley Chubb right now, uh, defensive end out of uh, North Carolina State, going with the Giants. Lots of rumors they could go after a quarterback, uh, as you mentioned, to replace Eli Manning. What's your gut tell you what the Giants will do with that number two pick? I think they're going to draft the quarterback, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you got to take a chance on one of these guys. But, again, who's the right quarterback? Is, is it Josh Rosen? Is it Josh Allen? Is it Sam Darnold? Is it Baker Mayfield? Is it Lamar Jackson? I, I really – can't tell you. It, you know, I don't think there's a clear-cut number one in this draft. If I had the ranked quarterbacks right now, I probably would give Rosen the edge. And somehow I just think Cleveland's going to screw this up and draft Josh. <laughs> For some bizarre reason, I think that. <laughs> it's just the way it is with, with that franchise. And I think the Giants could get their man. And, you know, if it is Josh Rosen, I do like the Giants' future. Um, you know, I don't think Josh Rosen will ever be a Carson Wentz or a Jared Goff or anybody like that. But I think he can develop into a solid NFL quarterback. And as we saw, Pat Shermer has done some wonders with a couple quarterbacks over the last couple of years, Sam Bradford, Case Canem. And why can't he make Josh Rosen better? Jeff, I want to get your take on the Eagles uh, in terms of who is, the, who is the number one threat right now to them in the NFC? And, and I'll piggyback off that. And, and have they done enough? to kind of reload a little bit here. Obviously, you're going to lose players. It always happens uh, in, the, in the National Football League. Do you think to this point, with the draft still two weeks away, have they done enough to reload and prepare for the inevitable loss of players that always happens with a Super Bowl champion? Yeah, Keith, um, I think it's the Minnesota Vikings right now. Um, you know, I'm getting tired of hearing the Rams talk. The Rams remind me of the 2011 Eagles dream team, bringing in all these uh, questionable personalities and trying to get them all to fit. And, yes, I, I understand they have the coaching staff to do that, but actually saying it and doing it are two different things. The Vikings, they needed to upgrade a quarterback. They got their man in Kirk Cousins. I'm not saying Kirk Cousins is a great quarterback, but he's a heck of a lot better than Case Keenum is. They added Sheldon Richardson on that defensive line. Uh, I think the Vikings are smart moving on from Sam Bradford, from Teddy Bridgewater, from Case Keenum, just giving all the money to Kirk Cousins and saying, you know what, this is our window. We, we have it right now. If we can get the number one seed in the NFC, uh, as the Vikings showed last year, they were very tough to beat in U.S. Bank Stadium. Uh, so... 
I think the Vikings feel they're not as far away from that 38-7 NFC Championship defeat to the Eagles as many other um, fans and other teams alike do. But I still think right now it's Eagles, Vikings, and then everybody's just kind of looking at them. I know the Falcons will be good. I know the Rams will be good. I know the Cowboys are going to be good again. But to me, it's Eagles, Vikings, and then everybody's just kind of looking up at those two at this point. Jeff, before we let you go, any kind of uh, out of left field uh, predictions you'd like to offer? I know there's so many mock drafts out there. Uh, probably somebody somewhere has the correct order of how everything is going to shape out. But the conventional wisdom out there, is there any kind of idea or a player that's kind of under the radar or things that may shock people uh, come opening day, the first day, or even the second day with rounds two and three? Um, you know what? It's so funny with the second and third round of the draft, it's hard to pay attention to it because the Eagles <laughs> pick right now. Um, I actually think the Eagles could trade out at number 32. Um, I did a couple of stories on, you know, if you trade out at 32, teams want that pick because of that fifth-year player option that you get with the first-round pick. The Eagles can get, can move down a couple spots, still get their guy, particularly a tight end, from 33 to 36, get it a high fourth-round pick, trade two of those fourth-round picks, and get into the third round. Yeah, you have the same number of picks, but you also have those valuable day two picks that Eagles um, you know, vice president of uh, player personnel, Joe Douglas, seems to admire. It seems like the Eagles really want to do their damage in the mid-rounds of the draft. It, and Unless you can get a guy that you feel is going to make an instant impact at 32, Darius Guy, Sony Michelle, guys like that. You know, Mike Kosicki, I think the Eagles can draft in the second round. I think the Eagles can get Dallas Goder uh, in the second round, tight end out of South Dakota State. I think those guys, they can afford to wait on, but if they really want their hands on guys or, you know, a Sony Michelle, a guy like that, then I say pick at 32. But that's, I only want to call it a bold prediction. I just think that that's what the Eagles are going to do. They are going to trade out of 32, just trade down a couple spots and uh, restock uh, draft picks. Howie Roseman has said they would like to do that. And personally, I, I think that's what they're going to do. That That's my mock draft, if you will. Mm -hmm. Jeff, you're saying that the Eagles are going to make noise with the trade. I think the fans are going to make noise in Dallas. What are your thoughts uh, on, on Eagles – nation being represented there in Jerry Jones's palace. I think it's going to be fun to see them make a lot of noise when, when it's finally their time to pick. It could be the second or third round, like you say, if they trade down. But what are your thoughts on this spectacle that is now known as the NFL draft? Well, I'll tell you what, Jerry Jones really has to one up what Philadelphia did last year. And Eagles fans do not forget what Drew Pearson did last year, rubbing it in that, that that the Dallas Cowboys have five Super Bowls. Well, that that's great. You know how old I was when they had their last Super Bowl? I was, you know, seven years old. I mean, Rick Sam was on TV the first time and the last time the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. So, you know, it, it's been a while for them. And I think Eagles fans are going to show up in Dallas and they're going to make their presence felt and they're going to let everybody know who the defending Super Bowl champions are, especially the Cowboys fans that travel in there and, you know, they may trade out 32 so you can get a guy like Brian Dawkins to say the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles instead of Goodell doing it and try to one-up uh, what Pierce did. But, I mean, to be honest with you, it's it's going to be loud there. I think the cameras from ESPN and NFL Network will definitely be on Eagles fans to see what they do, um, how they react. I know they've gotten a bad rep from Vikings fans from that NFC Championship game and really – we all know that 10, 20 Eagles fans does not make up millions across the country. And I, I think the Eagles fans will show themselves well at the draft. Jeff, thanks so much for your time and uh, contingent success with all the great uh, NFL coverage uh, for 247sports.com. Uh, Thank you, Jeff. No problem. Thanks for having me on, guys. All right, Jeff Kerr, outstanding uh, NFL reporter for CBS and 247sports.com. That'll do it for tonight's edition of Sports Talk. For Keith, I'm Chris. Good night, everyone.